Finally, in this video, I will answer the question that everybody keeps asking and will not shut up about. And that question is, how did I get my FCC's business license that I refer to so often? And allow me to be honest right up front, this video is not going to be as exciting and dynamic as all of my other videos because getting an FCC's business radio license is neither exciting nor dynamic. But you're here, I'm here, so you might as well watch. For those that may not be paying attention, my FCC's business license is the government permission slip that gives me the permission to use frequencies that have been set aside for me to use in my area as if they were all mine. These are not hams radios frequencies, nor are they GMRS frequencies, and the FCC coordinates who uses the frequencies in each geographic area, so they are virtually unused by anyone near me, making them almost mine. The government permission slip also allows me to transmit with pretty much as many watts as I choose, and it allows me to use whatever kind of digital modes and encryption that I want, all without any fear of persecution by the government. And because I am the epitome of intelligence and education on the YouTubes, I feel it is my duty to share with you how you can do the same thing and get the same kind of license. So first of all, of course, I am talking about an FCC's Part 90 Business or LMR license. This is the type of license used by businesses, government entities, ambulance companies, taxi cars, hospitals, etc. It is not a hams radios license. It is not a GMRS license. It is a government FCC's permission slip that assigns and gives you permissions to your own set of frequencies to use pretty much however you choose. And a business permission slip is not just for you. You can add family, friends, and employees to the license so that they can have the same protection from the government that you get. Now, no doubt, some people are going to whine and cry and leave stupid comments about whatever I say in this video, so allow me to just point out that unlike many of those other YouTubers, I am not here in front of you right now pretending to be some kind of FCC's Part 90 LMR business license expert or guru. Nay, I am just a simple YouTube hobo that has gone through this process myself, and I am kind enough to be sharing that experience with whoever wants to watch. So if you do not want to watch, you should just go away. And of course, many people are going to leave comments claiming that if you pay for this or any permission slip from the government, you are just a bootlicker and free men do not ask for permission. So allow me to just point out to those people that this would be 100% correct. However, getting an FCC's business permission slip ensures that you are not impeding or interfering in other businesses of other citizens because the FCC's does do a fair job at coordinating who uses the frequencies in your area, which may be important if you are actually trying to run a business. And unlike hams, radios, GMRS, CBFRS, or MERS, the FCC's does actually do some enforcement if someone should start jamming your frequency or causing unwanted interference or problems. So first of all, I should clarify and point out that in order to use the frequencies afforded to you by the granting of an FCC's business radio permission slip, you will need what us radio experts refer to as a part 90 LMR type radio. You cannot use a GMRS radio. You cannot use most hams radios. You will need a radio that can transmit in the LMR business frequency ranges. And of course, if you want to transmit at high power or if you want to talk with your friends in a secure and encrypted fashion, obviously your radios will have to support that as well. For my encrypted communications needs, I use a Motorola XTS 5000 handheld radio. And in my Jeeps, I use a Motorola XTL 5000, which allows me to not only encrypt everything I say, but it also lets me transmit it all at up to 100 watts of private encrypted 
goodness. What I'm saying to you right now is that you will need a radio that supports these frequencies as well as the features that you want. Getting a much coveted FCC's permission slip is very easy and there are two ways you can go about it. The first way is to simply fill out FCC's forms 601 and pay a couple of hundred dollars directly to the FCC's. FCC's Form 601 is about 30 pages long and filling it out is about as simple as filling out a full federal income tax form. You also have to fill in Form 6-1, Schedules A through N, which you must first read through and understand so that you know which parts of Form 601 you're going to need to fill in based on the type of frequency pairs you want and which type of geographically licensed services you are applying for. And of course, you will need to upload and attach all of your reference documents, waiver requests, and legal citations. And obviously, you must do all of this after you first contact your local FCC's coordinator office so that you can fill out their forms and coordinate with them so that they can then forward their portion of the application to the FCC's. But let not your heart be troubled, because verily I say unto you, there is another way. And that other way is to get your FCC's business permission slip by paying someone else to do all of that hard shit for you. And thankfully for all of us lazy people, there are companies that will do exactly that. They will ask you a bunch of questions. You will fill out a couple of very basic and easy forums. You then give them a lot of money and they do the rest. And that is exactly what I did because, let's be honest... Most of us, including myself, are lazy and just a little bit stupid. And in some cases, a lot stupid. So regardless of whether or not you fill out the FCC forms yourself, or if you take the easy way out, of which I will discuss more momentarily, no matter how you do it, when the FCC issues your business license permission slip, it will be good for 10 years. So if you want to take the easy way out, like I did, there are many places that can do the work for you. I used a company named Kemp Wireless in Eugene, Oregon, because I know the owner. I have purchased radios from them in the past, and they have also sent me radios to make videos about. Another company you can use and may have actually heard of before is buy2wayradios.com in South Carolina. I have also worked with them many times. I know the owner very well. I have bought things from them and they have also sent radios to me for review. I will put links to both of these companies in the more information section of this video below. The link to buy2wayradios.com is an affiliate link and the link to Kemp Wireless is a non-affiliate link. And should you decide to use buy2wayradios.com for your FCC's business license needs, you can use my promo code for 10% off any FCC licensing product through the end of this year. I'll also put that below. So when you use Kemp Wireless, buy2wayradios.com, or any service that does all of the hard work for you, this is how it goes down. They will send you a simplified application form to collect all of your basic information, and then they will probably talk to you over the phone to make sure that you understand everything and to go over all of the different options you can apply for. On the phone call or the interview, as they often refer to it as, they will help you decide on whether or not you should get a VHF frequency set or UHF frequencies. They will ask you how you plan to use these frequencies and where, and a bunch of other stuff, all to make sure you're applying for the right things and to answer any questions that you may have. And how you answer all of those questions, along with how many frequencies you're requesting, will determine how much you end up paying. Because the more fancy stuff and the more frequencies you want, the more forms they're going to have to fill out. But you can expect the price to be in the $450 to $500 of monies range. And just for deconfoculation, that is the one-time fee to fill out the paperwork, pay the FCCs, and get the license, which is good for 10 years. After the first 10 years, the renewal for 10 more years is currently $135 of monies, and you can probably do that part yourself on the FCC's website because that part isn't very difficult. However, one very important thing to bear in mind is that whether you are doing this the hard way or the easy way, 
it is important to remember that the FCC's business license is intended for use by businesses. If you are just some regular guy that wants to use these frequencies for a small individual business tied to a social security number instead of a business tax ID, the FCC's is going to take a very close look at what type of business communications you plan on doing. Most people with small businesses like mine are doing things like running a family farm or a pool cleaning service. They're a photographer or a videographer. They do mobile car detailing and things like that. However, if the FCC rejects your application for any reason, whether you did it yourself or if you pay a service like Kemp Wireless or buy2wayradios.com, the fees you pay are not refundable by the FCC's or the company doing the paperwork for you. So whether you do it the hard way or the easy way after you fill out the forms and pay your monies, it takes around a month for the FCC's to issue your permission slip, which they will then send you via the email. So getting my FCC's business permission slip using a third party service did cost me a few hundred dollars of monies, but it took less than 20 minutes of my time to fill out a couple of simple forms and to talk to someone over the phone. And now I have full permission to transmit 100 watts of fully digital and encrypted nonsense with no fear whatsoever of the government breaking down my door at 3 a.m. and shooting my dog. <laughs>